if you want a good, healthy relationship with your woman, it's it's what it is, man. It you just got to be open and real with everything. Exactly. And you find someone that's compatible. Baby, I want a room full of action figures. And she still has to be able to spread her legs for you. Uh why with letting you do that? She has to be willing, guys. Right, baby? Oh, that completely consent. caught me off guard. Consent oh my king. god. My husband's a consent king. This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by your favorite money saving website like Honey. I guess that's what you would describe it as. I don't know. Mr. Beast just advertises the shit out of it all the time. Um, I mean, I wish I had a discount on all this shit that I bought behind me. I'm broke as hell now buying all this shit. And I don't, you know, I do look like I eat a lot of honey. Piglet. Okay, what was I doing? Uh, um, if you guys are tired of these fake ads, make sure to reach out to your favorite sponsors, like Honey, and tell them to sponsor this fat ass, Unloading Meat. Now, back to the show. Hey guys, new episode of Unloading Meat, episode 8. 8? Man, we're already up to 8, damn. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this, if you are. And if you're not already, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, helps out. Everything we're trying to build here at Unloading Meat. On today's show, we have the ultra funny and hilarious and returning King Castro X and his better half, Joe Miller. Yeah, guys, returning guests. This guy made friends. True story. Um, we had a great chat. I'm always grateful for them to come into the studio and have some fun. Um, guys, sit back, relax, and unload the meat with King Castro X and Joe Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Unloading Meat and my special guest, my very, very, very special guest, the one and only Joe Miller. What's up? And her better half, or I guess you're his better half. Depends on how you look she at it. King Castro X. True indeed, we in the building, babe. What is up, people? Yo, yo, yo. We are here, we're in the building. It's a rainy day, but that's not bringing us down. I uh, feel like I at least make sure that I get to know somebody before they tag team me. Hey, you know what? We're at that point. Your yeah, body, your you choice. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been going on, guys? Oh, you know, just... Uh, Trying to figure out how to live our best life. Uh, we're actually getting ready to move into a condo. Ooh, slight shout out to condos. Slide up. I don't know if you can shout out that, but like shout out to condos, I guess. Shout it out. Shout out to the creation of condos. Our street addresses and uh, condominiums. Six 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 nine. We didn't do that on purpose, but somewhere oh, yeah. to Takashi's like, huh? Six 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 nine. Gang. Nice. I'm really excited gang. about the new place. We got a whole way we're going to lay it out. Uh, first off, new podcast studio. So I'm nice. always hyped for that. But then second, like, so this is our first home together, right? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we've lived in two different places. It's a milestone, man. It's it, a milestone. It's a big deal. As well, the wife is allowing me to immerse my stuff within the home as well so like she already let me collect figures and things like that but this time you that's know a good I'm woman saying? she is a fantastic fucking woman and she thick so props you know Joe. Props. Out here. props uh to the to being a good woman not because you're thick, thick. Props. well i mean thick, th props. thick props, too. props to being <laughs> thick my love uh you know what i'm saying uh but like we got a bunch of like old film pictures she's gonna hang up in the living room. We're hanging up fucking Batman and Alien art. Like, nice. come on, I'm, I'm working. So on... We have a whole fucking collage that's gonna be in our living room. It's all uh, actually one of the cons we went to. We got a bunch of like signed with the certificate mm -hmm. of authenticity. Oh, nice. Blah blah blah, which we don't really care about. <laughs> but a whole collage of uh, art, and in the center is going to be our signed art of. Zombie J and Silent Bob. It's signed by Trendy. Kevin Smith. That is freaking cool. Jason Muse and the artist. Nah. Nice. So that's gonna be the centerpiece of that little bit. Um, like he said, we've lived together two different places already, but 
first place we're both on a lease uh this is the first <laughs> place we intend to stay for you know more than a year it's real hopefully everything works out um there's the marriage certificate and then there's the lease yeah mm-hmm. marriage certificate then the lease you know yeah. we just couldn't we couldn't risk it we then actually taxes. i am <laughs> we're trying to get his tax situation settled out i won't air all of his business but he's got a couple <laughs> of years of taxes to I catch up ya. on so. oh yeah, spoiler that's, alert. That's our goal for this year. Yeah. That was the thing to you. I've never done that. Uh, it's a goal. A Before our shit is like actually fully entwined, let's get individually, let's get a little bit right. I've never <laughs> done taxes. And let's, let's fuck know. it up. You yeah. know what I mean? Something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, so that's so. definitely on the to do list. We're trying to do a little bit more adult shit as well as chase our dreams. You yeah. know, find better jobs that are at least somewhat fulfilling, not just soul sucking to pay the bills and, um, you know, Put more time into our passions. Completely understand. Mm-hmm. That's really where we're at in life. Um, he's taking a little bit of a break from something that's been a huge project of his, and we're actually refocusing on several different uh, nice. projects. I uh, like Tokyo shit comedy shows. That's what I'm most excited about. Shout out about. to Tokyo shit comedy Tokyo shows. shows. Indeed. I'm really excited about the fact, like, like she said, I've spent a, a little over a year investing into this one project. We did really well with it. We killed it. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy with the success that it, it, it's it's brought in. You know what I mean? But now I'm ready to concentrate not only on my other projects, uh, but my wife's projects. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's put a lot of shit on the back burner um, to help me elevate this main project that we were putting a lot of work into. And now I feel like it's my turn to, because it's give and take in a relationship. Uh, always so i feel like it's my turn to kind of you know what i'm saying let her do her thing you know yeah. what i mean uh, national woman's day and all that so <laughs> whatever my husband always supports me it was you know we talked on my podcast how this last six months i've not been sexy and free for me <laughs> i've not <laughs> been thriving so it's been a little bit easier in that realm as well to kind of take that back burner support not been able to treat yourself i mean we always treat ourselves. We live like way too lavishly for our budget, but don't um, we all? Yeah, we so extra. <laughs> you so extra. He wishes we were this extra. That's the extra he. It's called about. divorce. <laughs> well, we I don't know if you want to be that. that. Yeah, <laughs> we ain't looking to do that. So that's what's so cool about my wife too, though. It's like I feel like something like this is very much allowed in my household. Y'all can make fun of me for saying aloud, bro, but if you want a good healthy relationship with your woman is is what it is man it you just gotta wife. be open and real with everything exactly and you find someone that's compatible baby i want a room full of action figures and she still has to be able to spread her legs for you uh by with letting you do that she has to be willing guys right baby oh that completely consent. caught me off guard consent oh my king. god my husband's a consent king Big facts. you know <laughs> what i mean by that it's a metaphor man like your woman still has to be able to she got to be attracted to the fact that you want a room full of action figures. Pussy still got to get wet, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? Pussy got to stay wet. All that to say it means she still loves me, guys. Because we don't need vaginal world. tearing. That's yeah. just that's not that's, that's not tough. fun. That's uh, crazy. Pussy stay wet. Yeah. You know, uh, dang, dang. if you with the right one. Yeah. You know. Um, and you're of a certain age, because I mean, we don't want to discriminate about older pussies either. You know what? Older sometimes pussies can stay wet. They need but some wet. Sometimes they need, some they help. need that little help. Yeah, yeah no shame. No I'm not shame discriminating. Yeah, no shame in that game. This episode is not sponsored by Kway, but it could be. It could <laughs> be. It definitely could be. Shout out old people, man. <laughs> Shout out old if people. If you can still fuck, do your thing. I feel like old people like actually get the dirtiest. Yeah. Like I've been using this right. phrase forever, "grandpa dirty." Because I feel like, why not? <laughs> yeah. At this point in their life, like they've lived so much, well, they ain't got to keep it tight and right no more. Well, like they could just do whatever. By shit. this point, guys, I think this is gonna be like episode six or seven. I'm pretty sure the only sponsor that's gonna get here is like Farmers Only. <laughs> so like, I'm not worried about the demographics or anything. Well, let's get a Planned Parenthood sponsorship too, because old people. Did you know that what people in nursing fuck? homes, there is a a huge spike, a significant spike in STDs yep. in nursing homes. Yep. Old people get freaky. Like I said, old people get freaky, and they don't think they need protection because you can't get pregnant. All that boiled goose. Wash them creases. Wash, old ass wash them creases. Shit. Yeah. I mean, I have to do it as a fat person, too. You've got to do All it as any person up, with man. a crease. Yeah. A single crease, you got to do it. It's like the Michelin Man. That's crazy. Old people be having sex diseases. Old people be fucking fucking. Yo, Old people invented sex diseases. What are you talking about? They invented sex. They're the reason. Yeah. Before us. Yeah. They're the know, reason. Old people. With them came. Well, I mean, they. a lot they of came. them came. Yeah. <laughs> and then we came. Yeah. Now we're here. And now we come. Thanks, yeah. Dad. <laughs> Mom. 
anyone who had any play in uh, creating us. Whoever got the fuck, man, thank you for creating us. Pussy smelled like the Great Depression. Oh, God. (laughs) That's from Grandma's Boy, I think. That's a great line. That really is. That's excellent. That's crazy. That's nasty. He asked me the other day if my pussy could talk, what the voice would be. We have okay, a lot of you got to work on your segue with that because I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> Me and my husband, so we love each other. Episode. We love to fuck each other. We love to do shit together, but we're best Dang. friends. Um, and we talk about just whatever, whatever shit. First of all, we both do comedy. Second yeah. of all, there's no filter. We different. <laughs> we different. <laughs> it's um, a callback, kids. My <sighs> answer was Jennifer Coolidge, um, Stifler's mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely the voice I think my pussy would have. My husband did not like that, but you know what? Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs> I feel like I, she's not for everybody, but for some people, she really gets them going. You yeah. know, that's that's my pussy. <laughs> like, let's go. Does that mean like I got a thing for Jennifer Coolidge without knowing? Does that though? mean like you when you go you go to the sex store, you just look for the flashlight that's Jennifer Coolidge, and it's like that's my wife's pussy. <laughs> I have never. I I hope she has one. Like, she probably would. She would. I know. I mean, she, she said she banged more people than everywhere because of Stifler's I mom that role. I saw that. I saw that. Like, it was like a ridiculous number. Yeah, like that's some like what is it? Wilt Ch- Chamberlain numbers. I love her. I love it's her crazy. voice. I feel like she's get it, girl. Genuine, like. Yeah. Love that bitch. Love you, Jennifer Coolidge. Let's hang out, please. <laughs> Meet my pussy She'd face be fun to face. To with. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge would be fun as hell to have on here. She would. I just uh, sh- <laughs> like her face. It's okay. She's, she's watching this. <laughs> so many stories. Jennifer Coolidge, watch unloading meat. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're, you you had might. a whole career about unloading meat. Yes, you have unloaded Dust. a lot of meat in your life. Yeah, girl. And then loaded it. And yeah. then unloaded it. <laughs> and then had people whack off and unload their meat to you. To you. I mean, do you know how many people not only have you fucked, but that have jacked off to you, Jennifer Coolidge? <laughs> I don't know a number, but it's pretty high. It's definitely high. Like I said, she's not everybody's cup of tea, but damn, there's a lot of people that she appeals to. Yeah, she, she was a real cool. Some... She was at a real cool age. She cool was cool age. Yeah, cool age. Yeah. Yeah. Cool shitty age, but I'm gonna cut cool that out. <laughs> <He> <laughs> said, that was a horrible joke. Yeah. I can edit whatever cut. I want. <laughs> The power of editing. And I'm funny. And I'm funny now. It's like Missy was on here and she's like, oh, I have a real witch cackle laugh. And I was like, okay, well, show us. She's like, well, I de- can't do it until I laugh. Make me laugh. I was like, uh, obesity. Literally. And she's like, ah! <laughs> Obesity's not funny, guys. It's a disease. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's a disease. Unless you fall in a really funny way. Then it's always funny. I think pretty much anyone falling is funny. But you can't tell me obesity is not funny and then watch that scene on Family Guy where the tuba player goes behind the fat guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you seen that clip? Family Guy's is classic. That the... no, 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 no. That's when they fall. That's funny. The, That's the, comedy. The, the Family Guy it's... tuba guy. Okay, we're pulling this shit it's up. It's just, there's a fat guy waddling <laughs> and they're playing the tuba. I think it's Stewie. Yeah, Hot take. Stewie's I'm pr- tired of Family Guy. No, you're I, not. I'm pretty much am too, but just that thing comes to mind. But South Park is the elite adult cartoon. It is. is better. I will we agree. We talk about this as well. Quite adult a bit. It's a reoccurring ranking. conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember. I That's crazy. It's so funny. Shout out to Stewie Griffin for always being that one. The family I know. guy is good. You guys In doses. If you want. It's just, play- I've seen Like it. the part where The Rock you know is like with the action figures is fucking hilarious. I don't know if you've ever seen that clip. No. Like when know. The Rock explains sex or Dwayne Johnson explains sex. Oh, you haven't seen that? I thought you as a wrestling buff would have seen that. I've never family seen that. Family Guy's clip. full of gems. That's what I'm talking about. The gems, now, guys. I say I've never seen that clip. I feel like you're going to show it to me just like this last clip and be like, oh, wait. I remember. Oh, wait. I've seen that. That's my thing with family. I've seen it so fucking much. Like, I get <laughs> it. You know what I mean? South Park is fresh every time. Something new, something different. Again, kids, story. This is it. <laughs> I have seen this. <laughs> And they just keep like, and they just look confused and a little guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you it's think that's what he looks like after real sex? Probably. <laughs> and then he just gives them hundreds. He's like, <laughs> "Did you?" Know? That, that's the most <laughs> awkward thing. Like, if you dig into Dwayne's like personal story, like he was married for a while to Danny Garcia, and then they got divorced, and then like she remarried, and then they're the heads of, like his production company. 
So mm. like he's the star, and then like the Seven Bucks production is run by his ex wife and like her new husband, and then like her his ex brother in law Hiram and stuff like that. Like it's a whole family favorite of his ex wife's family. It's good that it they have a It sounds like they cool. were always meant to be intertwined, yeah. just not in the way they yeah. thought. Yeah, and I'm hoping it looks good. It looks good for the kids because they have kids stuff too. Yeah, but yeah. it's just kind of a unique thing that you hear. But like cause she's like. It talks about like she's like one of the co-presidents of Seven Bucks Productions, and it's Danny Garcia, and I'm like, oh, that's his that's ex-wife. Really that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. don't. I don't really know anything about Dwayne the Rock Johnson, really. Yeah. Except that he's, well, you know, uh, used to be a wrestler. Does he still wrestle? Sometimes, every now and then he'll come back and then tear a quad or tear a. a, a he's so fucking a groin. He tears a groin now. He's way bigger than he used to be. Like the, la- is- the last two times he came back, he tore his groin like each time. God. Where's your groin at? Is that like your It's the muscle balls? behind your di- Yeah. It's like a muscle behind Like your gooch. Your... How much yeah. can you tear that? Your gooch is your groin. He tore it during the match with John Cena and still wrestled. Like, it was like the first move of the match. He tore it. Jesus. So he's just wrestling with a broken gooch. Yeah, basically. Like, you, like, can you imagine like walking? Like like, to, like that whole muscle behind just your pelvic muscle. Just your yeah. dick and ass at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Dick and ass pain. Yeah. He, like... So, but seriously, your, your groin is your gooch? Well, I don't know if it's your gooch. It's kind of like... The, the muscle behind your dick and balls, and right where your your whole that whole muscle area, I think it's. That sounds like your gooch. What, what are we talking it about? It sounds like you're talking about the taint, honey. Your taint is your gooch. I know. D- does the taint sound like the area behind? What is the groin muscle? Behind your balls. Oh, this is gonna get this done on. Yeah, it's like right in here. It looks like the f- frontal region. It is anatomy That's of the why groin I'm like area. It's, it, not it, it's near like your right in here. <laughs> It's like They're in this not area. Showing us a good enough picture. I need groin strains. There we go. So like it'd be like in here. So it's like your fucking pubic bone, like like right in this muscle area. Uh, yeah. That's tough. That's so yeah, he tough. pulled it there. Shout out to Dwayne, man. Good job, bro. Keep going. <laughs> I think that's also like what stopped him from wrestling more was like also the, like the insurance from the Hollywood pictures and stuff like that. They don't want you to wrestle and stuff because they're insuring you for a major blockbuster, like millions of dollar picture. So they don't want you wrestling on the on the weekends and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes. Oh no, I lost a wired headphone. If only I had a company like Raycon sponsoring today's episode. Raycon. I need headphones. Are you a fan of The Rock as an actor? Is my question. Not really. I mean, I could appreciate what he is. Like I said, we talked about earlier, the Fast and the Furious. He fits in that genre pretty well. I just, I'm such a hater, I feel, of things that exist. I hate Dwayne The Rock Johnson as an actor. As a, as The Rock? He hasn't given me a role where I'm like, damn, Rock did good on that movie. He's never had any depth. What role <laughs> like, has he what had Like, what role depth? was made the, for him? The best movie I ever saw him in was Pain and Gain. Did you ever watch that? With Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. Marky Mark? Yeah. He probably's a roided up, dumbass, like, uh, just a roided up, uh, Muscle head, like a beach muscle head. Dwayne plays Power a watered down dude. version of The Rock, and it's horrible. I hate it. Every film. Well, to be fair, anybody that kind of reaches that level now in Hollywood is basically just playing themselves, themselves. in each movie. Like, right. look at Ryan Reynolds. It's just Deadpool in every movie. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yes, Hart. Kevin Hart and The Rock. It's Kevin Hart and The Rock in every movie. Watch this DC Super Pets. It's just them animated. I hate it. <laughs> I hate them. P- Detective Pikachu was just PG Deadpool. Where, where, where did good acting go, guys? Bring back Leo. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Bring back Leo. Yeah. She don't like Leo DiCaprio. He's, He's literally I... the greatest. Are you seeing all those memes about The Last of Us now with Leo? Uh, yeah, that not. he and it's his ba- new girlfriend are the same age as Joel Ellie and Joel's and difference Elle. in age Ellie. is what Leo wow. and his girlfriend are. Yeah, he's a hella creep boy. He out here fucking kids. I mean, they're legal, but barely. Yeah, barely. Come on, He's got Leo. a type, and it's... Child. Yeah. <laughs> to me, Leo and Denzel are the greatest actors to grace us on this planet. I mean, one of my all-time favorite movies is The Departed. Yes, and Leo sir. and Matt Damon and that are amazing. Fucking talk to me. I love The Departed. Fucking like, okay. Talk more about people that I care about. Jack okay, <laughs> well, uh, favorite actor or actress Will or Ferrell. just actor in general? Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. Will Ferrell, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, favorite movie, Will Ferrell's? That's... Elf. Elf. All Stranger, Elf is not my favorite. Stranger than Fiction? Uh, Lost. I like... Planet, what is that called? Air, Planet, <laughs> Planet uh, of the Lost. Planet of the Lost? Really? <laughs> no, that's not my no. favorite. I like Semi-Bad. That's a good movie. Or Semi-Pro. Uh, Semi-Pro, the soccer one. 
It's what basketball. I don't even know what I like. Oh, more no. I was thinking of kicking and screaming. Oh, yeah. I didn't like that one. I didn't either. That's why I was like, you like that no, one? No, semi pro is the like the 70s. Uh, uh, so, J- Jackie Moon, his yeah. character and his song, Love Me Sexy, is actually my uh, alarm tone. Really? It is. Yeah, I love that movie. It is. Love Me Sexy. My husband knows the song now because he hears it every morning. It's also where I found out that Andre 3000 could act. Mm, you never yeah. saw him as Jimi Hendrix? Or in the I, uh, later, Brothers? but. Uh, I thought that movie came out first. I don't know. Uh, then he also was in the Four Brothers with Mark Wahlberg. Yes, That's sir. a great movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, we've talked about Mark Wahlberg a couple of times now, and we talked about my genitals already. So <laughs> um, I do call my husband Marky Mark because his genitals are a funky bunch. Um, yeah. Do you want to elaborate <laughs> on that, honey? Or? Okay, we're going to talk about Mark Wahlberg. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sometimes your dick be stinking crevices. Again, call back. Call back, wash that ass if wash you must. That ass. Dead ass. In the words old. of Dale, the funky homo sapien. I just got to say, though, if we're talking about Marky Mark, can we talk about how atrocious his acting was in the Transformer movies? I can we hate just talk Transformers. About how the Transformers movies suck yeah, they do. Talk Except for Bumblebee's pretty good. Baby. Ah, the only character I care about. Bumblebee. You're well, I mean, the Bumblebee movie. It, I didn't watch it. Oh, that's the only good movie. It's completely you know who's separate. Well, that might be actor, why I completely kids, hate them. <laughs> is who the fuck? It also has John Cena in it. He didn't need to be there. But he's actually good in it. Is he? Yeah, he's What's good. What's his name in the movie? Uh, fucking what even Steven. Oh, uh, uh, Shia, uh, Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, man. He cold. I like Shia. Shia LaBeouf, man. Shia yeah, but every five seconds. Bob Bobby! <laughs> yeah. Optimus! He was good in holes. I also want to talk about Watership Phrasing. Down for a minute. <laughs> I got my husband to watch Watership Down by telling him it was about shoes. It's a Jew movie. Not. I'm a fan That's of why like I was not gonna endorse history it. It's and not shit. Not about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Jews and Nazis. It's not about that. Like he watched the movie, a totally different movie for me because he thought it was about that. So it's not really about Jews and Nazis. No. <laughs> Fucking hate That's that movie. That's why I have not. He talked about it in a stream last night. <laughs> talked about it in his podcast. That's all right. I thought it was about Jews and Nazis. Because that was just <laughs> fern, fern goalie. I have not <laughs> been endorsing it because I did not tell the truth. My husband low-key gullible, and I do use it to my advantage sometimes. So Should be playing me, guys. <laughs> It'd be your own people. Be those closest to you, man. I know how much he likes like learning about Nazi stuff and whatever. So I was like, yeah, it's obviously about Jew rabbits. Yeah. Like, it's about Jew the fucking... Holocaust. But how brilliant would that have been? Like, what a twist. Well, you guys said Jew rabbits a while ago, and I was like, are you talking about Jojo Rabbit? Because like, that, that's a movie about Nazis and Hitler, and it's called Jojo Rabbit. No, I ain't never seen what? that one. There's a real You've Jew never Rabbit seen Jojo movie? Rabbit? No. Oh, my no. God. Do you know who uh, Taika Waititi is? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Toby Nwagwe? <laughs> A cold ass Have you watched Thor Ragnarok? Yes. He's the director of that movie. He also okay. did Fly to the Concords and directed that stuff. He's uh, What We Do in the Shadows, mm-hmm. creator behind that. What uh, We Do in the Shadows, the show? Both. Or the, oh, the same person did both? Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, uh, Jermaine Clement from Fly to the Concords and Taika Watiti, they star and wrote and directed the movie. And then FX made the show, and it's in the same universe, and they're executive producer and write it and help create it. And then Taika also helped create Res Dogs. Nice. I didn't know that. He has either. an overall deal with FX and Disney. Getting educated. Today. Yeah, so Taika's really high in that kind of stuff. And he's uh, getting getting some real opportunities. But That's he made a movie called Jojo Rabbit, and the whole movie is about a Hitler youth, and his imaginary friend is Hitler. As a rabbit. No, it's just Hitler. <laughs> And like it's a comedy movie with his imaginary friend is is Adolf Hitler played by Taika Waititi. Is this what Winnie the Pooh is about too? No, but it's it's a really good funny movie. It's dramatic. It's, it's fucking it's, funny. Yes, about Jews and Nazis. We're yes. joking about Jews and Dude, Nazis now. If you watch any movie, please go watch jo- Jojo Rabbit. Look it up. It Ooh, is we'll check it out. It is man. one of the We're best movies. Watch it now. It is so good of <laughs> Am t- I wrong timing for like being interested in like Jew and Nazi history. No, because honestly, it's it's fascinating, and also we talked it about is. like the the Black Wall Street stuff. You don't want to. You have to learn the history. You have to know all go, history. You can't be selective. I'm about to give a shout out. Go to the Sherwin Miller Jewish Museum in Tulsa. Check that. Shit I out. went. It mm. was, I mean, truly like tears. Like it was such. It was such a moving, incredible experience, and to think about how so much of what's left of them and their culture and stuff it was dictated Close to the mic. by uh oh sorry it's i right. can't hear myself guys i didn't know how <laughs> close right. i was um 
basically what's left of them is what you could tilt it too if you need to like that. Nazis allowed to be left of them. That, that sounds sucks. great right there. That sucks. Anyway, Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take no a relation to thank <laughs> Captain America for saving us from the Nazis. Word and Bucky for giving his arm. Facts. That's real shit. Yeah, that's real shit. R.I.P. To uh, R.I.P. Winter Soldier. Yeah. Did you guys ever play that Avenger game? Did you Did you ever play it? I've got it right now, uh, baby. Dude, it's, it's dying. Did you hear they're, they're canceling it? It is. <laughs> Gotham Knights is already fucking dead. I was pissed. Dude, that My game sucked. Doesn't care about me talking. Or I looked at it. it, it looked sucked, atrocious. The game sucked, that baby. game was phenomenal. Really? But, okay, so here's my deal. Like, yes, it lacked a it, lot of shit. It but just how often, felt like basic look, as fuck. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you something. All right, how often do you get fucking Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, and Robin in a game? Hardly ever, and that's why I was so disappointed because Nightwing's my favorite DC character. You gotta character. take what you can, and we you like gotta Nightwing. just be. That's happy. why I still have Injustice Two loaded up. The monks taught being happy in a situation <laughs> of. Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> I was like, um, "Are you going off to like fucking like the, listen the Lazarus Pit with Rajah Ghoul?" And I'm like, I'm, "I'm talking truth right now." <laughs> the ability to find happiness even in the most destructive and saddening of situations is true peace, kids. Gotham Knights is a great game. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I've learned to make do with very little. <laughs> I grew up poor, man. I grew up fucking poor. I grew bro. up fat. Were you poor? A little bit. Until later. At, like, so, like, my poor? parents didn't get money until, like, my later teens. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a sh- culture shock. Because, like, we didn't have cable or anything. I lived out in the country. Mm-hmm. And um, we didn't have anything until I was, like, 13, 14. And then my sisters moved out. And then I was the kind of the baby. Because I'm, I'm one of three kids. Yeah, and like that was when we moved out to co. Like, well, I'll edit that part out. <laughs> uh, moved out to another country part side, and we had cable and direct TV and stuff like that. And that was the first time I ever saw like MTV and all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> I was like fourteen or fifteen. I can relate. That's how I felt when I met my wife, because <laughs> like I was broken, had nothing, and then she came through with good. And good now he acts like he doesn't shit. remember what it was like to be broke. When we go out to eat Asian, like, we get fucking everything. You know what I'm saying? I eat different. I need you to understand. Like, I used to not eat shit, man. You know what I mean? Ramen noodles, bologna, beanie weenies, motherfucking mac and weenies. He still asks for it sometimes. Tostino's pizza. I'm like, pizza. honey, you don't have to live like this anymore. Now, I get why I eat better. We're healthy now. We're you know? not healthy. We're we eating good. Chili We're hot stuffed. chili oil and dump. <laughs> This episode of Unloading Meat is not brought to you by stamp stamps.com. There's really Who the fuck uses stamps besides stamps.com is still a thing apparently and we would love to have you as a sponsor on Unloading Meat. First of all, mm. our relationship works so well because we are so open and honest yeah. as people and together. Um, we're planning on making the Significant Other podcast Coming to talk soon, about, kids, you know, streaming real life relationship type shit. I mean, just us, of course, true to us in our life, but maybe it'll help people. Maybe it'll help people like broach sensitive stuff. We had to have tough conversations. Yeah. You have to do that. Whenever you're meshing two lives together, especially two lives that are totally different. And yeah. there's going to be some rough conversations. And we've been talking about doing significant other podcasts for a long time. And honestly, can I say this guy's just coming from the part of having two divorces and two failed marriages and all that stuff mm-hmm. and coming from through therapy and all that other stuff. It's very healthy to hear that, that you guys are uh, admitting that they're going to have those rough conversations because it's re- better to have those rough conversations than to be silent and then it blow up later. It's like this, man. I don't want to lose the person that I have. Yeah. This is my... My one person, I've, yep. I've, you know, discovered that I, I much rather just have that fucking talk that we hate having than us grow to hate each other. We're, so yeah. let's just fucking talk about it, get it out the way. Yes, I'm a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let's when, get there and get through. When it. we first got together, it was very hard, as it is for a lot of men, to talk about his feelings. Yeah, and I, it's a it's he a difficult thing. Also, had know. this idea for a while that you know we could just avoid fighting. Yeah, and I'm not saying you should be fighting all the time in your relationship, but, but that's not healthy. Sometimes you have to talk it out, and sometimes you're going to get escalated, and sometimes there's going to be fights. Yeah, um, we have conversations all the time. 
literally daily about just stuff in general. We check in with each other constantly. We had a talk yesterday. It was like, hey, just wanted to touch base about this thing. You know, this thing. Can we talk about this thing a little bit more to make sure we're on the same page? Or, yeah, all the time checking each other's state of mind. I mean, you're you're not in the other person's mind. As much as you know somebody, love somebody, I think you can feel them and understand them. You can, but you don't know unless you're, you know, asking, checking. So it definitely takes a lot of communication. It takes willing to be vulnerable, too, which is also hard in this, especially in this day and age. It's so crazy to me, right? What I do, my heart's passion is communicating, podcasting, shit like that. Uh, the hardest fucking task I have with my wife, it's gotten better over time, but it's communicating, letting that shit off your chest. Us as men are fucking horrible at it, horrible at it because we're built in a fucking box that tells us not to do it, not to do it at all. Get the fuck out of here with that. You will feel it's freedom within self. And that's what I've learned is Allowing myself to communicate, allowing yeah. myself to allowing myself to tell my wife, hey, this is how I actually feel. Mm-hmm. Allowing myself to admit that to myself has mm-hmm. made me a far like, more happy person. The but- accountability, the the growth that I've seen him, we've both grown. Yeah. And we both we talk all the time. He talked in his episode even, you're never done learning. You're never done growing. You can yeah. always be better. You can always do better. We both very much subscribe to that mentality. I've seen exponential growth in my husband since we got yeah. together. Um, I've changed. I I mean, I'm going to be honest. I came from relationships where I was pretty much like, peasants, you do not deserve me. I didn't think I would get into a relationship and feel like, oh, shit, you need to do better, too. Yeah. And when you're with the right person. They bring out the best in you. You're going to know that about yeah. yourself. Because you're going to want to. Exactly. We talk about that all the time, too, is it's not... Everything takes work, but it's not telling someone they need to do this or whatever. It's feeling motivated to do it for the person that you're with. Big facts. Big facts. Shout out to my wife. (laughs) This wasn't supposed to be a relationship podcast, but... I know it turned into it, but it's all right. It's it's, kind of... Unloading me is wherever it wants to go. It is. It is. It very much is, but... With consent. You gotta suck your wife's toes, too, guys. (laughs) For those of you at home. Gotta oh, on her feet. I, okay, so Jared, to be fair, he's only seen both of us do little five minute sets. Yeah, to be fair, like <laughs> I, I just met these guys, uh, so we could be we could pull out the curtain a little bit, guys. I just met them on. F- we're, we're recording this now on a Wednesday. I met you guys last Friday. So five days ago. Mm-hmm. Five days. Yep, yeah. And that was the first time we had ever met, talked, interacted whatsoever, and yeah. it was. Person. Let's say a 10-minute conversation to be yeah. nice. Um, and then before that, it was just an email. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> right. Which I got to say, your email had me worried a little bit because you were just like, what the fuck is this? Skull. <laughs> that means dead. I know. But I, I know that now. But I showed it to my roommate. And I was just like, what the fuck is this email? And I'm like, <laughs> we're so in. Me and my husband are like, what? Okay, but there's no info or any. I'm like, what's going on? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, she's fucking funny. And I ended it with a hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I, de- I, was, I was apprehensive. <laughs> and I, then I responded to you, and then you just showed up that night by fate. It, like, just, you guys showed up at the open mic. <laughs> not orchestrated at all. Uh, so, yeah, we talk a lot about my husband is very transparent about the fact that he is into – a lot of shit sexually. Uh, weird shit. Freedom, man. You got to be free within yourself, kids. So I didn't realize when I got married or when I got with this man that any foot fetish meme that ever appears on social media, I am going to be tagged in. <laughs> uh, that's my life now. <laughs> Motherfuckers are haters. I don't know why. Literally, the only that. person who's like transparent about having a foot fetish, anytime someone sees anything about feet, they're like, Joe Miller. King Castro Wicks. <laughs> like, He's the guy that sees like foot models. He's like, oh, I know that actress. I've seen all of her work. I literally, <laughs> like, someone tagged me in like basically a fucking. She foot did an sex awesome thing. spread in Payless shoes three years ago. <laughs> Baby, do you know people by feet? Not yet. <laughs> Instead of MrSkin.com, there's like Mr. Foot. Mr. Ew. Have you guys heard of Mr. Skin? No. no. You don't heard of Mr. Skin? No. Mr. Skin is the creepiest website in the world. Well, besides anything that's like. They got some good foot porn. No, Mr. Skin. I heard heard first heard about him on Howard Stern. He's a famous guest on Howard I Stern. I love Howard Stern, by the Me way. Me too. Just plugging that. Uh, oh, man. Mr. Skin is a website that's one dude made where they categorize 
alphabetize and like just have everything down and make it's a search engine for any time a famous actress has been nude or shown her tits in movies. Uh. So you can type in the actress's name and it's categorized every single thing and you can watch that clip. Yeah, that's it. And is, it's like it does kind of broach that line of like creep level. It's yeah, very yeah, creepy, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. anybody. Like it's like so niche. They have like it's. It's a huge database. Can I just change that word? That's dedication De- to the craft. <laughs> okay. It's, I mean, so that's why I'm saying it's not like it's not out there. Okay, so the creepiest part, though, is at the end of the year, Howard Stern will bring him on to do the Mr. Skin top uh, end of the year awards, and it's like the best nudity scenes in the movies and stuff like that. It was kind of like when the Oscars were coming around, mm-hmm. they would do the Mr. Skin Oscars. And he would go into such graphic detail, like, I really love Marissa Tomei in this movie because... For, uh, Minute forty five twenty eight, she unveiled her top and it was wearing a blue brazier. And he's going into full detail full, about man. this, and Howard's just eating this shit up. And this man is showing his face. Yes, <laughs> that's what good but art does. It he's not even like you. it's not a bit. This is just who he is. Well, yeah. He's... Well, Howard has a knack of finding the weirdest people and he just does. presenting them with a the camera. This man is a dedicated creep. Yeah. I mean, he is. He owns it. I mean, I would say horny jail, but it seems like he kind of... That's Yeah, he's the horny warden. <laughs> this really speaks to all of us. That's inspirational. I say that because it's behind a paywall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I mean, he really channeled that. I mean, who didn't be- beat off to one version of Halle Berry in some movie where she had her tits out? Never jacked off to Halle Berry. Really? Never. That's how I started liking chocolate milk. Yo, <laughs> that was fire. My husband thinks he looks like Halle Berry. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the podcast Halle Berry, man. You know what I'm saying? The... The podcast, Tom Hardy. I'm, s- I'm so well. bad. I'm so mad that we we fr- we ran out of time on uh, your husband's episode. We didn't get to do the pre because I had a pretty good zing for you guys. Running. Did you? Yeah. Let's you hear can it. sing us. We just ain't got no zings for you. I said you look like eighty Bryant, and he looks like eighty sons that disappointed their fathers. <laughs> That's valid. That's me. That's me right here. This face. If you can zoom in. <laughs> Honestly, my dad has a lot to say about it. <laughs> so, like, that's kind of what my I was dad would with. too. I, mean, <laughs> I was hoping you would roast us. We've been on a few different roasts, man. You know we're, what I'm saying? So we we are very open to like, you know what I mean? We're planning on having a, a wedding roast. We, you we know, at our reception, yeah. we fucking love it. It's like, all in good fun. Man. I oh. love the. The imaginative nature, the yeah. unique stuff you can get. Like, yeah, okay, generic, like, slut, fat, whatever. Yeah, jokes. the I'm low-hanging like, sure, fruit of the whatever. Work. But sometimes you get some really good ones, and I love that. I love Like, the that hoodie just makes me think of, like, what could be said about you that hasn't been said about Peppa Pig? Aww. That's fire. Black hoodie dot clothing. <laughs> I own my own It's actually a pretty brand. fucking awesome hoodie. I'm just going to lie. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I'm just saying, the, the hoodie's nice. I designed this. I logo. saw the pink. I went with it. I mean, that's... Kind Shout of out a, to Jay That's how man. Tinder works. You got it. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> ah. Ooh. That's nice, man. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's not how Grinder works. It's brown. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. Although, but yeah, then no, we're not going to talk about that. That's a little creepy. We're talking about buttholes. Yeah. Is that I mean, what we that are talking about Grinder. Was that a butthole reference? It yeah. Was. Okay. Brown I didn't eyes. know if Grinder had like a thing where you push a button like, t- uh, not Twitch. What is it that he said? No. Uh, go Tinder? Oh, Tinder? yeah. Uh, how does Grinder work? Grinder? Okay. I kind of want to work this into a bit, and we're going to talk about this. Uh, Grinder's fascinating, guys. Is it? <laughs> ladies need to step up, okay? Ladies, I just I'm, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a camera on this. Ladies, you need to step up on your game, okay? Recently, I came out as bi, and Congrats. you got to step the fuck out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, I suck dick now. It's not a college credit. I'm just good yes. at it. <laughs> That's um, crazy. But really, you get on Grinder, and it is the DoorDash of dicks. Mm-hmm. You can literally just go on there and be like, "I want this, this, this," and this dude's like. Can I come up right now and blow you and then never talk to you ever again? And I'm like, game. See, that's what I imagined with fucking, you know. Dudes are very, like, like to the point. Fuck. They just like, I'm horny. You're horny? Cool. Let's screw. You got an STD? Block. Well, at least that's what I do. Most of them are like, I'm still cool with it. If you are, I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but, like, you guys got to step up the game. I know there's still a little more selection process, but, man, like. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's the selection process. It's convenience. Process. Just it's, be a hoe, man. It's the selection process. Women have. And they still pick shit men. Yeah. But they're so choosy. There's certain red flags for women that are just complete turn off. Like, I can go on five minutes and I can DoorDash some dick. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely one true. One can say I can. You got to like, make this lady You can even say I'm Uber eating. Good about herself. and. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. That was good. And you Come on. Oh, 
No uh, dick sucking jokes. I was thinking, no, I, my bad. I was in my head. I was thinking, like, <laughs> I almost want to test this theory as a bit. Just okay, go set ahead. Set up a fucking. Well, I'm just set up a fucking like you can DoorDash dick in five minutes, like right now. Yeah. Go, and then in five minutes we'll see what the deal is. Dude, you get some creepy motherfuckers. They either I'd look, imagine. they either look like me or they look like you. Here's the deal. <laughs> Uh, both are creepy. You know what I'm saying? My husband is not creepy. I, no. I imagine, <laughs> like... But with the, the hoodie up and sunglasses, you kind of look like the Unabomber a little bit. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Or Have most people on Grindr. Shades? Have you seen my pictures with me in the shade? It's usually my look. I didn't do the look. On uh, some of your podcasts, I've seen it. I, I Yeah, I got a look, man. I, I ain't been doing it lately. You know, I lost my shades, but I got a look. Wh- where are they at? He has, like, 20 pairs of shades. Know. You gotta... It's branding yourself, though, man. The aesthetic... Is a thing, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I'm the podcast Tom Hardy. Ain't that what I said earlier? That's what you said. Gotta have that shit, baby. We out here. That's what he said. Do you see it? Do you think my husband looks like Tom Hardy? Tim Hardy. Tim Hardy, the off-brand Tom Hardy. What was that? The (laughs) great too much Tim Hortons. Yeah, I do. Tom Hardy's one of my favorite actors. Tom Hardy's good. He He did what he could with Venom. He should be Batman. Venom was ass. Yeah, he did what he could. Hot takes. I take. I just feel like I'm slandering everything. I hate Dwayne Rock Johnson as an actor. Okay. I hate Kevin Hart as an actor. Half of his comedy is saying fuck people anyway. <laughs> fuck <so>. Afro <laughs> man. Fuck. Well, God. half my comedy is saying the people I would fuck. <laughs> is that comedy or is that just a wish list? Mm. Both. Not mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of people that could just be doing better at shit. Yeah, you know very true. I think we could all be doing better. Am I a hater (laughs) for having an opinion? Just live your best life. You be you, boo. I agree. I just feel like in this generation, like, I'm a a hater because I'm like, "Mm, you know what? Nah, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? It's whack. Like, we cool. We chilling, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by a famous game like Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. I've never played it, but boy, if they sponsor this show... I might give it a try. Hopefully. It, it, it really depends, Stefano, on what the contract says, like how long I have to play it. I've heard good things. Have you heard good things? Eh, nobody cares about your opinion. Anyway, if you uh, are sick of these fake ads, make sure that you reach out to people like Raid Shadow Legends and uh, tell them to sponsor the show on Lonely Meat, and they'll be replaced soon. Anyway, back to the show. We talk a lot about like our impressions of celebrities, like not doing impressions of celebrities, but like based on zero facts, yeah, just how we how feel, we like feel about be. them. Yeah, we talk about celebrities all the time. And we're like, we just feel like this person would be a huge dick, no basis in reality. Or has one. You're like all the Facebook groups. Or has a big dick. We've we've had that conversation <laughs> before as well. So and so said this about Tom Hanks. Oh, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Tom Hanks got a big dick. I bet he does. I really feel like he do. Look what I've created. Yeah. <laughs> like he got so big. That man right there packing me. He bigger than Liam Neeson, I feel. You know he jerked off to Wilson. He had to. He had to. He, had he did else. what he had to do. That movie was beautiful. We literally watched Cast all away. of it except for the last like 11 minutes. Y'all we did not watch the last, last 11 minutes. We're not missing much besides the FedEx package bullshit. I mean, right. that's, uh, I love Hel- Cast away. Helen Hunt's cameo. Tom, we like that. Forrest fucking Gump, though. Oh, I love Forrest Gump. Oh, wait, yeah. I watched it all the way through for the first you know, time in the last couple of weeks. Yes, she just saw Forrest Gump for the really? first time. Fana- she, I, I'm not a big movie <laughs> watcher. I don't know how we, like, somehow, two, three episodes now, I think, we've referenced t- Tom Hanks. Randomly. Did we, did we reference Tom Hanks? <laughs> yeah, we did. Forrest Gump and all that stuff. Like, Missy and me were talking, shout out to Missy, uh, little Miss MG. Uh, she was talking about uh, her favorite movie is The Lady Killers. It's mm-hmm. a low-key Tom Hanks movie, and it's a fucking hilarious movie. I haven't seen it. Um, another one is The Terminal. I don't know if you've ever seen that one, where he's stuck in an airport terminal, and he's like a foreign guy. <laughs> it's hilarious. He's just like, he can't leave because he doesn't have, like, a, he has visa, visa issues or something like that, so That's he's just crazy. stuck living in this airport terminal. That sounds like And he's just this friendly foreign hell. dude. <laughs> sounds like hell. But he, like, influences everybody in the terminal, because everybody in the airport's, like, rushing and pissed off and stuff, and he's just yeah. this quaint foreign guy, just happy. Like yeah, it's what just leaving a nice little impression. I don't know. It's it's some kind of little foreign accent. I was curious. It's Tom Hanks doing an accent. I mean, the worst we've ever seen him in was fucking the new Pinocchio. But can you blame him? That We're poor man. Or that have you seen the new port- Pinocchio? It's Tom Hanks in front of an entire green screen for two hours. I changed what I said earlier. Leo being the best. It's Tom, a COVID movie. Tom Hanks he? is the best white. He was actor. Geppetto. Geppetto. It's a live action retelling of Disney's Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. And the Pinocchio CGI, the entire world CGI, it's a green room. But and how much of the movie is Geppetto really in? 
quite a bit when it's Tom Hanks and he's the main star and he's the only star actor. The only person. Yeah, like, the rest of it's like voice acting or what? Yeah, like even the whale and stuff like he's in it a lot and like you could tell he's he's just the only person in the room. It's done on the volume like the Star Wars movies are and stuff. It's really it's poor Tom Hanks. Um you guys ever watch the Lord of the Rings movies? Yeah. Yeah. Um Hobbit movies? Not yet. I've seen the first. <laughs> Did you ever see the clip of uh Ian McKellen or Ian McKellen like one of the most prolific actors ever like breaking down and almost crying on the set of the Hobbit? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because everything was green screen and he was having trouble like reacting and acting and he was like it was just too frustrating. He's like, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm just I'm done. That's sad. Like he was like that dude was breaking down. Like this is too hard. I'm I'm having to act. He was doing a scene with like 13 dwarves and he's the only one in the room. All What's the dwarves were CGI. Well, in that in certain parts because they're doing forced perspective. Uh-huh. So he's bigger and the dwarves. Right. Is it the like stuff. bar scene? It's the part where they're doing the plant, the spinning plates and stuff like the Hobbit. The early you parts. haven't seen the Hobbit, baby. Oh wait, I saw my Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. The Lord of the Rings movies are really good. The Hobbit movies I would just skip. Harry Potter is better than Lord of the Rings. Ooh, How did you take. feel about uh, them hot calling take. him Smaug? So yeah. I saw it. I saw it in person. We during my episode we talked about like collective reaction and yeah. stuff in the theater when they first said his name Smaug. as Smaug. Everyone looked around like, "What the fuck?" My sister who. Oh, read the books and all of that, she was just, like, outraged. <laughs> and I was like, is, is that, what's wrong with that? Everyone's like, it's smog. It's smog. <laughs> I was like, okay. I don't know. I didn't read the books really. I read only The Hobbit. No hot just... take for you. But no if that's what the directors are I just didn't really it. feel for the movie. I the movie. like, were... I didn't feel it at all. Well, I the just... movies just felt rushed to me. And I know there's a lot of backstage chaos behind it because they lost Guillermo del Toro and had to bring back Peter Jackson. Like, mm-hmm. they were already filming it and they had no access to any of the stuff from Lord of the Rings. For like the armor and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I. That's another thing about the Harry Potter movies because my husband wanted to bring them up. They feel a little rushed to me as well. Yeah. Mm, I agree as well. But they do. So it's still a massive good, undertaking though. they took. And they did. Pu- they did Potter. pull it off, but like it. It is kind of one of the things. Kind of like the Last of Us. People have talked about like the creators of that, where it's the same person that behind the movie, the game, is doing the show too. Neil Druckmann. I didn't know or that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. The creator director of the game is also one of the main creators of the show. It's him and the guys, the people that made Chernobyl on HBO. Yeah. Uh, but he said that, like, it's, yes, it's the same story, but it's just a different telling of that story. Right. And it's like, you know, passed down, there's going to be different alterations to yeah, it, depending on sure. the, the medium. Iteration. Yeah, again. I love that word. Mm-hmm. But it's not, not either one is better than the other. They're just different interpretations, different right. iterations. And you're going to get people who are very passionate about yeah. one thing or the other and one or the other. And well, I stopped. That's a strong opinion. After about like book, uh, movie three of Harry Potter, like The Prisoner of Azkaban, that's my favorite one, actually. Prisoner that's of Azkaban. a lot of people's favorite, man. Or Goblet of Fire. I actually love Goblet of Fire, that too. That one as well. He doesn't like Goblet of Fire. Which is your favorite actually. movie of the seven? Or the first one. The first one, really? I'm going to tell you why. This is it why. sets the whole universe? Because it still brings, it's a feeling thing for me. It okay. still recreates every time I watch it, that same feeling it gave me as a child when I watch it. It's I can, beautiful. I can understand that because it's also like the first time I saw Star Wars. Yeah. Mm. It just, so you asked me if I was a Star Wars guy earlier too off air, uh, why you were doing yeah. Baby's episode. Uh, no. Yeah. But I love the first three, the original three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up watching those with my papa, my, you know what I mean? Yeah. My grandfather. It, it will always hold that place of like significance for me, that special yeah. feeling in my heart. When I watch Harry Potter number one, uh, I'll still get that same feeling I had when I watched it with my mother. You know what I'm saying? Well, so put that it this will way, always uh, be the best movie. How do you feel about Jurassic Park? I like the first three. Agreed. I don't give a fuck about the world. Star Lord in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, they they go way downhill. But baby, we're, we're, me and my sorry, <laughs> me and my baby, we, we we about to be watching it soon. Joe Miller, for those of you guys watching at home. Well, know. what I was getting at is like the first time I was in theater, I was like five when Jurassic Park came out, mm. and my grandma took me to the theater, and I remember like just the first time I see dinosaurs on theaters, you're just mm-hmm. like, it's phenomenal, it's, you, amazing. That, it just it's sim- it implant or ingrain something in your brain, like you mm. know, kind of like you're talking about the first Harry Potter, like it just it takes you back. You know what movies has the best CGI? Hmm. Baby, you know what movie? No, but I want to talk about my favorite movie, Shrek. Okay. Now what movie has the best CGI? <laughs> He's going to say Planet of the Apes. Planet of the motherfucking goddamn. <laughs> I knew it. Bitch apes. That's a great fucking fuck. So we actually did watch a little behind the scenes Jesus. of how they ended up like doing the CGI. You the know, ar- Andy Serkis, with the, the, with the arm does. things, the, yeah. the extenders mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like, Oh, yeah. And Andy Serkis doing his work. We didn't realize it was yeah. Smeagol who plays um, Caesar. Yeah. Right. 
but and another guy we had seen in an episode of Black Mirror actually. Yes. We just happened to see him. He was uh, Koba. Toby Famel or Toby. Uh, what's his name? Uh, who plays? I don't know. Okay. I don't know his name. We don't. There. We know their face. But, oh my! God. It was interesting though. I mean, so they really wild. they put a lot into that. Well, that was the also the argument too of like. People were really pushing for Andy Serkis to get like an Academy Award nomination for Caesar, and Should it's like they done. were like he's disqualified because it's not true acting. And I'm like, and back then we were like, but what's the line? That is clearly like he didn't. They, 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 he was disqualified because and like his dude. emotion in that movie it was captured with his face not too, only and body acting, like the full but yes, so the beautiful body, the body acting that you have yeah. to do. Well, it's like um the Last of Us where we talked about that on another episode too. Play, I'm playing it again. As we're nice. watching the episodes, nice and just like beat for beat, the flow is perfect in certain scenes. I'm sure you watched the latest episode where they, where they see the porn magazine in the truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's shot for shot, word for word timing exactly. Like it's perfect, and like that movie, that game is really cinematic. I don't know if you've ever played it. It is. It's it's it's, it's one where I was worried they were gonna fuck it up, but mm-hmm. also if it had a good team time, it, it's kind of impossible to fuck up because the movie already or the game already is a movie. Right. You're just playing a movie. So if they just recreated that on screen, it'd be perfect. So I'm glad it's really doing well. What do you think of Ellie? I really love the character, the the person that's playing Ellie. I agree. I had struggles with her before. Um, me and AJ talked on the very first episode. Uh, sh- the look was different, mm-hmm. and also uh, it's hard to judge her on this like nine minutes of Game of Thrones footage because that's the only time I've ever seen her. Right. But dude, she's she's Ellie. She was amazing. Yeah, she she's amazing. doing excellent. But uh-huh. we she- definitely, um, and you know, people look different obviously yeah. we all are unique looking but she is very unique looking. yeah initially i was like whoa yeah she's different looking did you guys ever watch game of thrones no i watched like the first i didn't even know um, she was in that she's in it as just for like a couple of scenes she's plays like a nine-year-old really? head of a castle like a, basically a head of a people oh and she's like a nine-year-old against all these other like kings and she commands the room nice she we're bringing it up yes seen please it. show us that this scene. is where i first fell in love with her and i was like so she's She's definitely a, a powerful actress. Lady, you were named for my Aunt Liana. We said she was a great beauty. I'm sure you will be too. I doubt it. My mother wasn't a great beauty or any other kind of beauty. She was a great warrior, though. She died fighting for your brother. Back-tack. I think we've had enough small talk. Why are you here? Which I've I come with my sister. Perfect for the Ellie role as yeah. well. She just, but like throughout that role, and she, spoiler, she gets murdered. Um, oh, a dang. lot of people die in that movie or that that show. But uh, is she British? Yeah. In real life, yeah, that's nice. always amazing too. Like when you watch The Walking Dead or any shows where like they British put on the people act. kill shit, bro. They're excellent they are at acting. Fucking <laughs> yeah. amazing. And if you notice, um, a lot of them pick a certain dialect mm-hmm. to study, like a Southern mm-hmm. accent, a Boston accent. They don't do just. There's no American accent. We have a very, yeah, uh, a lot of dialects mm-hmm. and a we lot do. of different accents. You know, one of my favorite uh, British actors is Cillian Murphy. Ooh yeah, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Uh, what's Dark Knight. Twenty eight days later. Twenty eight days, days later. Days later. Um, uh, Tommy Shelby. Yeah. Anything Tommy's with uh, in. Christopher Nolan. He's in. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. uh, Dun- Tom's in a lot of his yeah. shit as well. Like I said, Tom's one of my favorites. I talk to the wife about it all the time. I think he should be the next Bruce Wayne. Hot take. I'm not. Re- I'm not an action movie person. First and foremost, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the cult classics. Quote quote aren't that appealing to me you know we tried to watch what was the one we tried to watch the one with jack nicholson Mm -hmm. uh fucking the shining yeah we tried to watch the shining and it didn't even we didn't even finish it It we didn't even get halfway in did you ever watch dr sleep no yeah um have you heard of it i've heard of it okay um watch the director's cut don't watch the regular the director's uh, okay. cut adds so much more backstory. It's it's what there's sometimes where a director's cut is just a marketing toy like hey our, right. p- our ploy there's sometimes where it's a completely different movie um, yeah, absolutely what's that movie sex trip or the comedy it's completely off kilter but have you ever watched it it's kind of like euro trip or road trip one of those movies mm-hmm. the unrated movie adds like completely separate b plots that mm. make everything make sense <laughs> the theatrical version cuts all that, and you're just like, oh, it's just a campy comedy movie. Right. And the B-plots make all of it more, like, kind of like a Jay and Silent Bob, where it's more sentimental, it means mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. You can have dick and fart jokes, but you also have to have some story and some stuff behind it. That's my thing, is I enjoy uh, an action movie with a plot. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. like, if you can get me to watch one. I've seen way too many action movies where it's like, it's just a bunch of shit going yeah. on, and I'm like, this doesn't make any movies. fucking sense. Yes. You know? That's why, like, you talked about, like, you hated the Transformer movies. Mm-hmm. 
honestly, please give the Bumblebee movie a, a trick. It is literally about a bot, and do you know who Haley Steinfeld is? She was a uh, Hawkeye. She's the female Hawkeye. In the TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She plays in that, and it's him and her, and it's kind of like the Iron Giant. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's literally Transformers the Iron Giant. It's Bumblebee and a girl in the 80s, okay. and she's trying to keep him hidden. And I like Bumblebee as a character. Yeah, in and general. it's just it's just a cute do you? Iron Giant movie. Mm-hmm. I, I do. Know that. But that's the only Transformer movie I really like because the other one has Marky Mark and yeah. Oh, why are we talking about him again? <laughs> I don't know. Like I always laugh because his move in that movie his his name in that movie franchise is the funniest fucking name I've ever heard, Cade Yeager. Cade Yeager. And he's a Texas scientist with a Boston accent. Have you ever seen Slither? Yes. Mm. James Gunn? So, uh, Grant Grant. Grant Grant. Grant uh, Grant is I confused my... James Grant. Uh, uh, what's the movie James Gunn did to that? Didn't James Gunn direct that, though, baby? I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slither, Slither, yeah. So yeah. Grant Grant is the okay. main character's name. Okay. Grant okay. Grant. Okay, I was thinking you were talking about director. I thought that was James Gunn. <laughs> no, no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Michael Rooker yeah. is Grant Grant uh-huh. in that movie. First of all, love that movie. Just showed it to my husband, I don't know, in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what got him Guardians. That... But that's a dumbass name. Yeah. <laughs> that's a dumbass name. That's probably. Well, I just loved it because you had like Kelsey Grammer in the Transformer franchise. It's like some kind of like guy in the U.S. you know presidents or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know the stuff, and he's like Mister Jaeger. And I can't take that fucking seriously. The last name Jaeger. I just think he's fucking doing shots. And... Yeah, Jaeger. Yeah. He's like, we gotta figure this out, Optimus. Like he has that fucking thick Boston accent. He's trying to be a scientist. I'm like, what the fuck, dude. To be fair, though, I can't remember anybody else's full name from Slither, so maybe they did something with Grant Graham. Yeah. Maybe I mean, most comic book names are fucking Peter like that, too. Yes, yes, yeah. yes yeah. we have talked about that. Hey, fellow hipsters and people that have culture or something, I'm Jared Ralphie Allen, host of Unloading Meat, and we need sponsors for the show. If you identify with this fucked up hat I'm wearing, these shitty tattoos... Or any other cultural references that are behind me, reach out to your favorite sponsors and tell them to sponsor the show and let me. Now, back to acting like I wasn't impressed by anything. I wish this podcast could be on vinyl. All right, guys, we're back with the wonderful Joe Miller and That's me. King Castro X. Yes, sir. The podcast what Tom is Hanks. Up? The podcast Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, this whole time I thought you were talking about Tom Hardy. You meant Tom Hanks this yeah. whole time? I was Tom Podcast Halle Berry, if you guys <laughs> recall. Uh, I evolved into the Tom I, uh, Podcast The Tom whole Hardy. time, yeah, Tom Hardy, I thought is who you were talking now, about. Now. Now he's Tom Hanks. In my uh, perfect form. Perfect uh, form. More I, perfect than well, Halle people, Berry. People say I have a figure for podcasting. Oh, well... You look beautiful, man. <laughs> Thanks. You're I have beautiful. lots of figures. You do. <laughs> so this man has the coolest fucking figure collection I have laid eyes on in person ever in my life. Well, thank uh, you. It's amazing. It's amazing. I do want to shout it out. Uh, my husband's just filled with lust and not for me like usual. <laughs> I want <laughs> jelly. Are you jelly? I'm a little this jealous. This is where I want to get with my figure collecting. It's like this. This is what my future podcast studio will look like. And you too can have this with long COVID. Long COVID available now. Long COVID. Long COVID. And crippling debt. And crippling <laughs> depression. Long, long COVID really helped me out uh, recently. When no, I'm just <laughs> I actually put I actually put that on my TikTok uh, when I got my Haslab Galactus in there. Yeah, like that thing's a fucking expensive thing. Like that was a uh, how much was it? If you don't mind me, I got it's know. like six hundred bucks or something nice. like that. Um, now if you go on like aftermarket, they're like three grand. Mm-hmm. Let me price out this iron man gauntlet real okay. quick what do you what do you what'd you pay for it what that if it, the red one i have somebody trying to sell me one currently uh retail one. on that was about 100 bucks so 110 okay so that's I'm, very fair okay i got it on clearance at walmart for like 48 really yeah just on clearance but that was years ago so they're not even making that one anymore so possibly worth a grab yeah now is it the big one or the smaller one like the, it's the, big it's so that yeah yeah it's huge because they make okay. a tony stark one like the one he had at the end of the movie and that I one's the chick yeah I want to talk to you more about figure collecting, but that's you fine. Know what I'm saying before we leave, if I can get yeah. ten minutes with yeah, you, that's fine, baby. Just you know what I'm saying. Hell, I don't even know. This. I got Thor's axe over there and stuff too. Yeah, I saw. I saw. A piece. There's still more and things. I got Power to Ranger look at. weapons up there. I got all those. I got the Thor's hammer. We yeah, uh, we, we got appreciate lots of you rocking with us, man. What's yeah, your man, favorite piece? Ooh. That's a good question. 
Do you have any mm. history on your pieces as well? Um, like is some... everyone attached to a memory, or are you like? I just bought the figs. I mean, the CM Punk stuff. Yeah. Now, worth a lot of money, and like I, I have a signature actually framed still from WWE when he was still a wrestler. Nice. So I have Finn Balor's stuff up there. Um, it's really just recreating my childhood of like things that really impacted me. Like I have the NECA turtles up there just because I love the turtles movies. So I love the Raphael in the trench coat. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the first film and Casey Jones. Baby, are we ever gonna watch the turtle movies? Probably. That was the first. I love that. You want to know why I love the first turtles movie the it's most? It's my favorite. I was a little kid. It was the only movie I, movie I could watch that had a curse word in it. Nice. Because mm. he fights Casey Jones and he gets his ass kicked to him. And then he goes, damn it. He does. He, he just screams just like it in it. Central Park. And as a kid, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The pizza in that movie looks so fucking yeah. good. I know. Dude, but it's fucking Domino's. Back when Domino's was shit. Yeah. Now I, it's the shit. I actually like Domino's I now. personally like Domino's, especially for the deals and the coupons and stuff. Yeah. Again, like, kids coming in with the hate. Yeah. I fucking hate he Domino's. He doesn't like Domino's. Fuck Domino's. I never get to Mazio's, eat Domino's. Guys. I love Ma- Mazio's Ranch. Mazio's Marinara. Okay. Ooh. I'm not even a Marinara eater. Mazio's Salad Bar. Uh, oh, Mazio's Lunch Buffet. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's actually kind of a local thing, too. Like, we don't Cal- Mazio's yes, here. absolutely. Just like uh, really Brahms. I love Brahms. I love Brahms shakes and stuff like that. <sighs> Okay. Collective sigh. Okay, can I just say this? I like their milk and their like their marketplace inside. It's pretty mm-hmm. clean. It's usually pretty clean and pretty it affordable is. pricing. I love ice cream, so like I like Brahms ice yeah. cream. We decided to ha- to try Brahms breakfast oh, a few weeks Ugh. ago. Here we go. Well, we didn't know. You know, you want to know, know has a surprising good breakfast? Mm. And I think this is probably gonna be a hot take. Hot take. He, he's gonna have an opinion on this. Taco Bell. Never, I never, never ventured. Never. Okay, never they have a Crunchwrap Supreme, and for 60 cents, 60 cents more, you can add steak to it. And you get a Crunchwrap with eggs, steak, hash browns, and cheese. That's all you need. A hash brown aside, little Cinnabon Delight donuts, and a drink for five bucks. Nice. It's crazy. I do like a bargain. It's a pretty good bargain, and it's, it's steak for breakfast, and it actually tastes fucking good. Real quick, yeah. let her bro get this Brahms story off. Go ahead. Real oh, quick. yeah, we decided to try Brahms breakfast. I just, uh, I just gave a plug to Taco Bell breakfast for some fucking reason. <laughs> apparently it's I'm good. I'm that fat. Apparently it's good. We've been talking. We got to talk about food. We have to. We know food. It's literally one of our favorite things. My mine husband. Can't, can't you tell mine too? <laughs> violently. Spray vomited within eight minutes Ooh, of eating oh, Brahms. Is this my eyes were all red biscuits and, and gravy that morning. Uh, oh, not the biscuits and gravy. Yeah, he was throwing up. In such a way that it seemed that he were transforming <laughs> into a were- werewolf. Um, it was so violent. It was so long. Like it was like everything so he'd long. eaten for days came out. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> when he the ate most... that, it was the most violent bar. F- this episode of Unloading Meat is not brought up to you by your favorite VPN providers such as Express or Nord or any other VPN product that is constantly bombarding you with ads on every podcast, YouTube clip, everything that you ever watch. Hell, I'm half... Exp- Honestly, VPNs, you guys should just be advertising on every Pornhub site and any, any kind of adult site. Because, guys, if you're ever trying to, you know, wank one off real quick, and you need to be sure, sure, that your favorite cable provider is not browsing on it, hop on a VPN. And guys... If you're tired of these fake weird ads, reach out to those VPNs and tell them to sponsor on Loading Meat. Now, back to the show. Hey guys, welcome back. We are here with the wonderful Joe Miller and King Castro X. Guys, what's going on in your lives? Uh, where are you guys going to be next? Uh, I did get invited to do a, the Riff show. Uh, Brett Jeffries did invite me to do that. That's nice. at Ruby mm-hmm. Reds. Shout out uh, to Brett. Last, last Sunday in March, I believe it is. Um, talk your shit comedy is about to be back in full swing. That's Very my nice comedy show. Uh, not sure exactly where I'm gonna have my new home venue be. Um, but that's very much coming. Uh, very much always a good time. Okay. Uh, Soul Tap. We've got a bun- We're sitting on a bunch of episodes that we have not actually released. So you can look forward to where basically they- our entire second season coming out on Spotify. Nice on Spotify. In the next, yeah, in the next couple of months. Uh, we've got pretty much all of season two recorded, just not dropped. Very nice, very nice. Um, I love hearing uh, seeing just a whole bunch of content drop. It sounds nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Soul Tap. So let's talk about podcast. That's me and Alex Miller. Uh, you can find us on 
socials. Um, my Instagram is at it's Mila Vanilla. My personal Facebook and comedy Facebook, J O M I L L E R, Joe Miller. Um, I think that's about it for me. All I want to plug at this time. King Castro X, how about yourself? Check out the Your all dapper new self. and all amazing uh comic cons podcast on spotify youtube and all other streaming platforms you can follow us on facebook at comic cons podcast soon to be instagram at comic cons podcast that's c-o-m-i-c-k-h-a-n apostrophe s podcast ladies and gentlemen check us out uh with all due respect podcast all streaming platforms uh um that's the why cutting up podcast coming very soon as well that's with me and the homie why not black hoodie dot clothing check out soul tap podcast shout out to my wife check out oaky podcast man anything russell sun eagle does man you got my stamp on it that's the king mm-hmm. right there keep doing your thing and i gotta just say you guys seeing it in person the black hoodie clothing it's fucking fire it's legit great quality stuff thank you i'm thank not you. just saying that it's it's good it's good stuff Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, figure collectors, comic writers, everybody that does anything in the nerd world, holla at your boy. We trying to interview you and highlight your brand. Thank you guys so much. I guess comedians, too. Uh, if you have a unique perspective, mm-hmm. if you're unashamedly yourself, um, if you're just fucking funny, yeah. reach out to me and I'll get you booked. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for stopping in on the show. Did you have something more to say, uh, King, Ca- King uh, Castro? Uh, Got tongue-tied a little bit. Hashtag... Hard on for Hogwarts, hashtag King Castro X Gaming on Twitch, hashtag the podcast Tom Hardy. We out this bitch. Hashtag doing your mom. Hashtag doing your mom. <laughs> hashtag why does that ha- hashtag already exist? Doing your mom? Yeah. Because everybody that's, wants to That's my favorite thing to do on my stuff on Instagram whenever I'm pl- plugging stuff or putting stuff up. I'll type in like a random hashtag and then I'll, I'll see how many results, results there are. And I'm like, follow up with hashtag why does that previous hashtag have 817 results As hashtag said, that's fucking weird i mean like <laughs> you find some creepy shit on hashtags but anyway guys this has been unloading meat i am jared ralphie allen my guests today have been the wonderful joe miller and king castro x yes sir thank you so much for watching take care guys Nobody knows what it is, what it is, what it is. Bye, have a great time.